Hi guys, thank you so much for joining me. I don't have a prepared script or anything like that. I think I'm just going to talk from my heart. And those of you that are interested in hearing a little bit about what this has been like for me, you know, death and depression and devastation. I know it's not a happy topic, but it's my real life right now. So, thank you for joining me. Anyways, I, it's like, how do you even begin to describe the emotions that you go through when, when you lose probably your whole essence, you know, everything that you've Everything that made you, you know, every bit of you that's, that's you is gone in the sense. So, you know, I know some of you have followed, you know, your friends with mine on Facebook and, and some on Instagram. And I've really been quiet on Instagram. I haven't said much at all. But on Facebook, I've posted a lot of stuff about what I'm going through with my parents and their death and you know how what the what the adjustment has been like and I haven't been I haven't been able to bring myself other than the video I posted when I talked about my mother dying when Jay and I went and picked up her ashes I haven't really been able to bring myself to do a video about her and about my feelings and I just, I just didn't have it in me. I didn't think that I could really talk without, you know, breaking down, crying. Because even though everyone says, oh, you know, time heals all wounds, I know it does. I know time, there will be a point in time when I can think back and I can, and I'll smile more than I'll cry. And I look forward to that. Because I do have a lot of wonderful memories, cherished moments of when I was with my parents, when I was raised by them. <laughs> it sounds so silly, I know. Here I am, 69. I'm 69 years old and I've lost both my parents. And I feel devastated. I feel devastated. I'm, I think I'm really struggling with depression over this. Um, there's a whole lot of stuff that's happened, that's gone on, that, you know, is just way too much to even attempt to talk about in a video. But the normal stages of grief, no matter how old you are, it doesn't, it doesn't get any better because you're older. It doesn't get any better because you had them all these years. It doesn't it doesn't get any, sometimes I think it's actually worse because you, you've had so much more time with them and so much more being used to being with them, you know, that they've been for 69 years an everyday part of my life and then all of a sudden, boom, you're an orphan, you know, you don't have them anymore. How, how do you deal with that, you know, that feeling, that overwhelming feeling and you know, I'm, put, I'm pretty vocal. I mean, I post about it. I've posted photos. I've talked about it mostly on Facebook because I have a lot of friends and family and co-workers and stuff like that that are there. And, you know, I'm pretty vocal about how my feelings, how, I, how this has really impacted me. So I get a lot of good advice and a lot of good suggestions. And, and I so appreciate all that. But I'll tell you, it is not, it doesn't make it any easier because you've had them for a long time. It doesn't make it any easier that you're 69. Yes, of course, if you're young and you lose your parents when you're a child or a teenager or a really young adult and all that, and you haven't had the time that, you know, that you might need to develop into a person before it happens, into your own skin, so to speak, before it happens, that's devastating. I always say, well, at least I've had them all this time. And... You know, I have 69 years of memories built up. You know, even the first few years, I don't remember much, but I have all those memories built up. But when my mom died, and, and I know I mentioned this in a previous video, but when my, 
when Jay and I went to, and I haven't really even talked about much about the trip. You know, I posted that one video when we came back on the vlog on Hawaii and Vegas. Well, when we came back and mom had fallen, Jay and I came down with COVID and mom had fallen, broke ribs, went in the hospital. And um, I did, you know, I couldn't see her until I had the, the clean test, which thankfully I did get. So I was able to be with her the last day of her life. But, you know, it could face time and, and um, it's, it's not the same, though, as being there and touching someone and, and all of that. But when mom went in the hospital that Friday night, I had a dream. I talked about the dream in my previous video, so I'll just summarize it. But in that dream, probably because I was really stressed out that mom was in the hospital and I just really was feeling this was the end. So I had a dream that dad, my dad, was coming for her and... Um, and and I and I said to Jay, Ma, I feel Mum is going to die on Sunday, Easter Sunday. That was their seventy first wedding anniversary, and I feel that Dad was coming for her. She had her her body had started to break down. Um, she was denying going to the doctors. We wanted to bring her to a GI specialist because she wasn't eating. She was losing weight. Uh, her blood volume was low. So the last at least this year, 2023, and actually most of last year, you know, she lost my dad, she lost my brother. So, you know, it was all these losses, but she still seemed to function well. She had her friends, we took her out, we did. Jay and I, I'm so happy because we have all those memories of when we took my mom and dad out for rides. And then after my dad passed, my mom out for rides and we did things with them. I'm so happy about that. And I'll tell you all, if you still have your parents, take the time to make those memories. Take the time to do that because I have no regrets. I have absolutely no regrets. I think often of the rides along the coast or the rides up to the mountains or just taking them, picking them up, bringing them to my sisters and having 45 minutes. Sometimes I'd record them 45 minutes to an hour in the car talking uninterrupted um, but yeah you know making those memories and those moments now as as in this stage I can look back and I have no regrets you know yes I you know could maybe gone and visited more often but there were times that three sometimes four days after work, I'd stop by and visit my mom. We'd have her up here on Saturday or on Sunday, do a little bit of a, you know, impromptu barbecue or whatever. So did I have a full day? Not all that often, but I had, I had enough that I really felt, I really felt it was impactful. It was quality time. It was quality time. And that to me is the biggest piece because that gives me no regrets. I think of all the stuff that we did, all the times we talked, and I have no regrets. That's, that's a really good feeling. Before Jay and I went to Las Vegas for our convention and then for a, a little mini trip to Hawaii, mom told me about a dream she had. And in the dream, she thought it was so real because she saw dad in the hallway at home and she was talking to him and she was really, couldn't believe it was a dream. And I remember saying to her, and this was probably within the last month of her life, I remember saying to her, you must really miss him. And she said that she did. And I wanted to say, are you feeling ready to go to him again? But I didn't. I didn't say those words. But her dream and then the two dreams that I had, Friday night and Saturday night, the exact same dream. Dad was coming to get mom. It was going to be April 9th, which just happened to be Easter Sunday this year. It was going to be April 9th, which was their wedding anniversary. And that is exactly what happened. Her kidneys started to fail. Um, she really started to go downhill Saturday night and Sunday. And we, we, knew, we knew it was it. She had all her friends, not her friends, she had all her family around her as she left this earth. Her grandkids were there. Um, and those that could not make it in person, my niece, who lives in South Carolina, she was on FaceTime Live, the whole thing. She was with us every moment. Those last moments must have been so hard for her to be so far away. 
and only be able to be there that way. I'm sorry, get emotional. But this has by far been the hardest thing I've ever gone through in my life. You know, I realize now, and I've realized this for a while, that all the stuff that we gather at the end of the day, no one's going to want it, you know? I mean, my sister and I are going through my mom and dad's possessions. 60 some odd years they've lived in that house. And the, the, the photos, the, the letters, the things that they saved, the memorabilia, the things that were important, things that they touched, we're going through all of that and we're, we're thinking, you know, who's going to take this, who wants that, and there's so much stuff that it's so sad because there are things that I don't have room for, you know, uh, my sister doesn't have room for, and um, yeah, so it kind of reinforces to me and Jay that we need to go through all of our stuff so our kids don't have to go through it as much. You know, I mean, we still have the attic to tackle. We're doing the basement. We're doing all the rooms in the house. You know, it's just it's just an astronomical job. And we find these treasures. This one picture, my sister posted it of my mom and dad when before they were married, probably 1948. I'm thinking, I'd never seen this picture before. Never. It was found in an envelope. You know, never seen this picture before. And in this picture, this was a picture on my wedding day, my mom, the dress that she wore on my wedding day, I have it. It was hanging in her closet under plastic, you know, preserved nicely. I had that, that dress. I don't know if I'll ever wear it. I don't know if it'll ever fit me. I'm a lot taller than my mother, bigger bone than my mother, but I have it. And I have their wedding band. This is their wedding band and I'm gonna wear it around my neck because I don't want to size it. My mother had bigger fingers than I do. Um, I don't want to size it, and I don't want to just wear it on my, my fingers. I just want to wear it up close to my heart as possible because it's, it's a piece of them. It's the ring that my dad gave my mom when they got married, and it means more to me than almost anything right now. It's those memories. So I wanted to come on and just say, Please, please, please do whatever you can so you have no regrets. You know, take the time. I know we're busy. I work full time. Everyone is super busy doing all sorts of different things. But there will be a day when you won't have your loved ones anymore. And those of you that have already gone through it, you know exactly what it's like. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how old they were. It doesn't matter that they lived a good life. It doesn't matter. The pain is there. The pain is raw. And it's one step at a time and for me anyways talking about it helps me deal because I feel devastated I feel every time I'm, I'm in the house and I touch something my dad built the house my dad built the house for us and we have all these memories there and it's time to let those go you know it's time to let those go and it's so hard it's so hard it's so hard but I wanted to come on and say, I'm okay. And a lot of people say, are you okay, Monica? And I'm going, I'm okay. But I also know it's okay to not be okay. And it's okay to say, I'm not okay. I'm just so conditioned to say, I'm okay. But I'm really not okay. I'm getting there, though. But I'm admitting the depression. I'm admitting the overwhelming devastation of how I feel. I'll get back on the bandwagon. I've got a number of reviews. In fact, the next few videos that you see will probably be those reviews. I have to get them done. There's a couple of products I'm so excited about sharing with you, but I, um, I wanted to do this first. So I wanted to do this video because I wanted to share with you all of the feelings about what it's like, what it's been like for me. But I wanted to still go on and carry on and do the things that I have to do because I know my mother and father would expect that of me. They would expect that of me. 
and I'm going to be the daughter that they expected I to be, I would be, or continue to be. I'm going to put that smile on my face, even if I'm smiling through tears. I'm going to put the smile on my face, and I'm going to treasure all those memories of mom and dad. And I'm going to continue to make moments with my loved ones that I can treasure so that I know I will have no regrets. Regrets can really get to you. They really can. Anyways, thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching. The videos I have coming up, the reviews, some products that I'm super excited about, I'm going to share that with you. One product I was starting to use when I went to Vegas. So, you know, that was the end of March, right? And so I've used it for a while. And another product that um, I just started using that I'm like over the moon about. So I'm going to be sharing some products in my next video. And every now and then, I'm not going to try to be too much of a Monica Downer. But um, every now and then I'm going to talk about the grief process. Because it's like just such a huge, huge part of me. So I hope you bear with me. Thank you so much. Love you all.